Hello, uh, we're going to do another problem from Newton's Laws of Motion, but this time involving the concept of friction. Okay, I really like these problems because they already give us what we're looking for, uh, or the goal, the main idea, and what strategy, and the free body diagram. Now, uh, once again, I cannot stress uh, enough the importance of the free body diagram in this case uh, because it gives us clues as me being a visual person it gives us clues as to solve the problem or understand the motion that's happening here speaking of motion in this case the hockey puck is moving forward it's actually the velocity is still moving forward but it is coming to a complete stop so this is a good example of where the net force is going to the left. Well, the friction is going opposite. So that means the acceleration is also going just as well. So this is a perfect example of the true meaning of deceleration or a classic example of deceleration okay it's only accelerating in the the x not in the y these this may seem a bit um trivial but we need the fact that these two forces cancel out otherwise we can't solve the problem so let's see what we're given and what strategy they even recommend for solving this so you already know that friction is going to be involved. We're given the initial speed just in the x and then that it travels which 120 meters it's all in three significant figures and the final velocity still in the x is zero and um, it's slowing down steadily, as they mentioned in the strategy. If you read that, that acceleration still in the x is constant. This is also important because it allows us to use some of the kinematic equations, just one. And we're just looking for one thing. We're looking for mu k between this puck and the surface of the ice. Now, the coefficient of friction will change depending on what surfaces there are, not just because it's, there's a puck, but puck against uh, asphalt will be different, or puck against laminated wood will be different, and that will completely change the value of the coefficient of kinetic friction, or any type of friction. Okay, formulas. Only more than one. Um, obviously, we'll need the one for friction. Friction is fun. I like these capital N. So that's F K mu K, and is, this is the one of the formulas we'll need because it actually has mu K in. It's decelerating, but still, that still means it's accelerating in the x. Okay, but how about the y? Once again, said in the y, it's actually not accelerating. It's actually a good example of. No acceleration. Example of Newton's second law here and Newton's first law in the y. Okay, and then they also recommended another equation. I'm going to rewrite this. Um, you know, it's a lot of indices. Okay, and actually for this one, it is the x goes to zero because it stops. Okay, let's see how we use all of these together. Okay, so with that kinematic equation that we just used, uh, once again, we can only use that because AX is constant. And going back to what I had before, I'll do it again. Check your kinematic equations for this one. Okay, this is not a times x, this is ax. 
a sub x. And that goes to 0. And we're actually going to solve for a sub x. Notice that becomes negative. It's not, this is negative, okay? Not the squared, otherwise, it's not an even function. And we're solving, we're trying to isolate delta x. Uh, isolate um, ax, rather. That one we get this formula. Check this out. It actually shows that the acceleration will indeed end up being negative. Interesting. Hmm? And that will end up being negative Okay, this will end up being on top, uh, meter squared, second squared, and that's going to be 400. But this meters will cancel out with one of those, giving us the units of meters per second squared, the uh, SI units for acceleration. Okay, so check this out. The value that acceleration that we actually get is most certainly negative. Point six seven meters squared, meters per second squared. Okay, cool. Um, believe it or not, I'm actually going to start. Um, I'm actually kind of going opposite here. I'm going to start with that equation next. So it's not accelerating in the y. And there's only two y forces, that's why we need this. Normal force going up, the weight going down, negative. So that it's going to be normal force going up minus the weight going down equals zero. Now, um, if I move the second term to the other side, I'm just going to write the magnitudes. Uh, it shows that the magnitude. Oh, the normal force equals the weight. Well, whoop, it's good because it's on a level surface. It would change if it were on an angle. Okay, hold that thought. We're getting there. We're getting there, I promise. So now we're gonna use this equation, which will bring us to our answer. And there's only one force in the x, and it is negative. It's the friction. Oops, I don't know why I did that. Okay. But what's the formula for friction? Now we're going to use all of our formulas. UKN. I'm just going to do the magnitudes from this point on. And then um, let's divide both sides by yeah, let's divide both sides by negative n. All depends on what we're looking for. In this case, remember we're looking from UK. And that gives us mu k is equal to negative m a x over n. But what is n? n is actually 
jumping the gun there is mg just from our equation right here okay and take a look at that it has mass and mass that actually cancels out and we're bringing this almost to a close where the uk which will exactly what we're looking for is just the negative ratio of the two what our acceleration is also negative then we have 9.8 meters per second squared at the same units the units should cancel out as a matter of fact because mu k is unit less it's just a ratio essentially of the the friction to the normal force and we're going to get a value less than one coefficients of friction are we're off that less than one. And since this is uh, ice, we expect something not that big. And sure enough, there we go. Take a look at that. I hope you're able to follow along with all the solutions uh, that I had. We can use the arrows to help you out. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Hope you enjoyed, and good luck. Ciao.